Then we can wait until 10 because maybe she was informed that we start at 10, right? No, no, no. She's just going to join the meeting, but she's not going to on her camera because she's busy. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. I also just came to that. I will just share my screen first to get ready. Okay. <clears throat> So, feel free to start. Uh, has she joined the meeting? Uh, I think there was someone. No. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, not yet. Can he join? I mean, is this. Uh, uh, hang on. I'll just give her a call. Microsoft Teams. Maybe she needs to request. Uh, I already sent her the link. Okay. Oh yeah, she replied already. Uh, uh, doctor, are you okay to wait for a while? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah, I think she's uh, okay. here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, doctor, this is my supervisor, uh, Carmen. Miss Carmen. She she's in she's in another factory right now. So I think she's in a in clean room. So I think she cannot uh, okay. reply you. So I just start. Sure. Uh, so this is my internship. Uh, my internship period is from twenty sixth of July to first of October. Uh, it, it got delayed uh, a week, so I also delayed at, at ending my period uh, a week later. So, okay, well, uh, this so your, yes. your offer letter is still 10 weeks, right? Yeah, it's still 10 yeah, weeks. Okay. But that's the most important um, to fulfill the requirement. You have to have uh, 10 weeks on paper, I mean, on the offer letter. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, and uh, I also notified Dr. Ina, Ileana. She also gave me an extension letter, so I extended uh, under top work also. Okay. <clears throat> okay, my course is Bachelor in Mechatronics Engineering. Doctor actually taught me hydraulics and pneumatics, uh, if you remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, uh, and the company is Top Glove Corporation, Bahad. So I'll be going week by week uh, for what, uh, what I did. And if some weeks are less, it's because I did a lot of repetition work, so I didn't repeat repeatedly put in the slide. So for the first week, <clears throat> after I I enter Top Glove, after my registration, uh, they first made me, ask me to search about the, the manufacturing process of gloves. Uh, this is what I came up with. And there's actually a slight difference compared to the Top Glove version, which is, is this. I'll explain it step by step. <clears throat> they start first with coagulation, which is like cleaning of the the former, the thing that they use to uh, make the glove, that thing is called a former. They first coagulate, then they dry it, then they go to latex dipping, 
leaching it's something like a smoothing smoothing of the the surface of the glove and then they pass through beading which is the the folded the folded part the the folded part of the sleeve then vulcanizing is like strength, strengthening of the, the glove then post leaching smoothening it again then slurry dipping is like a uh, powder put powder on so it could slip off the former and it's stripping uh, stripping is taking taking the glove out from the former separating it separating it then it's tumbling uh, they call it a uh, wet wet powder it's also like uh, taking away the excess powder and the difference is the last two part is the quality control this is very important uh, for top glove and packaging which uh, my department is doing we this r d <clears throat> is more focused towards the automation of packaging yeah so this is the the whole process not the whole process uh, but the the main process of the making of the glove the manufacturing process and next is yeah. okay next uh they asked me to draw <coughs> excuse me sensor covers for compounding tank dog tank and chemical tank that's why there are different uh, sizes of tank so i have to i used autocad and then i designed it out and then they were printed out using a 3d printer which i will show you uh, in the following slides then <clears throat> okay this they introduced me to their packaging prototype at their workshop which i'll play the video for you right now uh, if you have any questions afterward uh, there's a still photo at the, at the other side. As you can see, the those boxes or inners, they are being pushed. So this is a pusher. They are being pushed on a on a that thing can lift up and down. So it's like a lifter, and then they're going to packaging it into a big a big box. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, there's actually a conveyor there for the inners to move from left to right. Then yeah. And you can see the thing goes down and the inners are being pushed so there are actually two two layers and then they will be pushed in the box but uh, okay if let's say uh, okay i'll just speed it up a bit <laughs> what is the actuator used for this uh, arm or pusher coming in what is the actuator used for this movement uh linear actuator <laughs> Electrical linear actuator. Okay. And we'll be pushed into this box. Yeah. So this this project is their project. Uh, but I'll be doing a lot of research. Uh, in with this prototype. Yeah. Okay. So the video is pretty finished. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now this is the still photo. Uh, as you can see, this, this is the same the same uh, packaging prototype. Now, uh, this green line is uh, the conveyor. The inners, the, the boxes of gloves, will roll up to the conveyor. And then after five, uh, five inners are moved towards it, others will be gripped. The five inners will be pushed to the... As you can see, the orange, orange thing, that is the lifter. It will be pushed there. And then, as you see in the video, it will be stacked on top. So five by uh, five, five. So about... 10, 10 inners and then it will be pushed into the box yeah so i'll be focusing on as you can see something is holding the box on your left there that is the <coughs> guide they call it the guide so i'll be focusing on the guide and the pusher okay okay so because when i started my internship it was actually uh Due to COVID at the time, the cases were very high, so I had to work alternate days, uh, as I wrote in my logbook. So when I was home, there's actually not much to do, so I did research on. They asked me to do research on the leading actuator, uh, and then they asked me to search for the description, the application, the limitation, advantages, examples, examples as in, like which company produce what kind of linear actuator. Yeah, if you want. See it longer, I have to pull up the, the PDF. <laughs> so oh, I did okay. this. And then, all right, these are the, as you can see on the right, uh, the left and the right side, these models you've seen just 
designed using the AutoCAD and now they are printed out using a 3D printer, uh, which is here. Uh, then as you can see at the side, at the their base is have excess of those, uh, I think this is rough PLA. Yeah. This material is rough PLA. So I have to trim off those and then on the right side, which is tr trim properly. And then later on, there are another step, but then I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, this is actually not a 3D printer. <laughs> this is something I took from Google. Uh, it's the company policy that I cannot show you the yeah their 3D yeah. printer. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, yeah, but it looks something like this. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I I operated the and when they are uh, busy with other tasks, I operated on this 3D printer. Help them to take out the models, change the filaments, and the the tough PLA and other material P P P. They, they change materials to print out these three D models. Yeah. And all right, they also asked me to do glove packing. This is this plastic is actually just used to lay one glove on glove on top, and then they used to roll it up and put into the inner so that it does not like. Uh, it maintains in the shape of the of the inner when I fit the glove in. So this is just a tool to, to roll it up, to roll the glove up and then put into the to the inner the box which contains the glove. Okay, it's just it's just like a hard cover. <laughs> right, we are into the second week. <clears throat> the second week. Also, I think mostly still working on the days, but I did research on vertical properties. Vertical properties. Vertical conveyors. Uh, this one they want to implement in their workshop. So, because their problem right now is limit, limited of space, so they want something which saves space and then can move the inner after they've been packaged into a box, they can move them up to another level. So I did five different examples. And then I think the middle one is uh, vertical conveyor is the most suitable because it moves boxes and then it doesn't require so much space. And then I also did uh, research on recycling company. They, they wanted to focus on recycling PE and ion and TPU. Tetra Poly Uterine. Yeah. So these are the Malaysia Malaysia companies that are involved in this recycling. They wanted to go green, so the, the ones highlighted in red are the ones they are that they are interested in. Uh, I also learned about the Tomofo machine. I went to one of their factories and then I was I was exposed to this machine. Uh, this is also a model that I pulled up from the internet. I couldn't show you the actual model. This thermal machine actually helps to uh, it's like to seal the gloves after they they've been wrapped up. Like one pair of gloves, once go through this thermal machine, it's wrapped up with half paper, half plastic, and it will be sealed, uh, vacuum, airtight. And then it come out from at the other end. Yeah. So this is what the tomorrow form machine does. I learn about it, and then I, yeah, I get to watch another uh, some engineers working on this. Uh, while I take notes and observe their progress. Um, I also continue designing more, more uh, sensor covers. They are different. They change the diameter. They change the size to fit the sensor that's going to be used in the production line. Which <laughs> software do you use for this? Come again? Which software do you use for the drawing? This one? Uh, AutoCAD, yeah, mostly AutoCAD. <laughs> and, uh, okay, this is the same picture I use this now. Now, uh, this one I highlighted, as you can see on the left side, that's the guide. And then on the right side, that is the pusher. Uh, simple terms, easier to understand. They wanted to find, because when we were operating with this prototype, the pusher was shaking and the guide wasn't working very well. It was flexing and then the, the glove box couldn't enter the bigger box. Uh, the rate of succession was not that uh, good. 
so they wanted to they wanted to change uh, use another material uh, so I took into concern of the characteristics of the weight the strength the cost the temperature tolerance the corrosion resistance and the durability I took I wound up taking three different uh, three different materials which is magnesium alloy aluminium alloy and carbon fiber there's also polymer but I think they end up when something they went with something stronger like a polymer base it's not here right now because it's been shipped back for uh, adjustments yeah they, they need to do adjustments so what is the current <laughs> material for this the current material is some po poly polymerized plastic it's a very tough plastic, plastic? I'm not oh, it looks like aluminium for me like a no, no, wash this, one's a, this one's aluminium alloy but uh, this one is shaking so they change it to another model. The model is not here right now. Oh, <laughs> so okay, okay, okay. There's another model, but it, it's been sent for adjustment. So so it's not here. Yeah, they already in, implemented a new model. So what is actually your task on this? Actually, you do you need to I, do I, some I analysis or what? The, I researched the materials, which one is best suitable. Ah, uh, okay. And they take, yeah, they came into the conclusion of using a polymerized uh, plastic. Yeah. Polymer, okay. Okay, uh, <laughs> they, they asked me to, to think of other... They asked me to think of other solutions as well. That means not use this pushing, pushing method into the box. So I also suggested uh, a, suction, a suction and the rod. Uh, this doesn't work for them because uh, they had past issues with other failures using this kind of method. So they suction. didn't want it. Yeah, okay. it's a uh, robot suction hand. So they didn't want to go with this model. Yeah. Okay, we're into big tree. Uh, okay, this I just cut cut more models out. Okay, and I when I cut them out, I also send them to the end user, which I'm I cannot review <laughs> to who. So yeah. yeah, so I send them to be used in the production line. Right, this one I haven't shown to one of the, the buddy system that they given to me. There, there's a buddy system here in Toggle. Uh, yeah, I'm supposed I'm supposed to propose uh, a pusher that can enlarge and shrink when they change the size of the the box that they're pushing. So, okay. yeah, for for example, like let's say this size is five by five, and then they can change it to ten by ten at, at any time. So they want to push different size of boxes. So I came up with <coughs> excuse me with this kind of design. Uh, there's a video here. Okay, you see as as it like when the boxes are too big, it, it will expand, and then if it's for small boxes, it will retract back to to a smaller. So depending on the size of the inner, this pusher can enlarge itself and then shrink back down. Mm. Uh, this one I I haven't proposed to the to the body system yet. Yeah. So this is why I done. Okay, the next one is. <clears throat> okay, they also asked me to create a flow chart for the 3D printing in layman's terms. Basically, explain 3D printing to a person who does not have strong knowledge of how a 3D printing is used. Mm -hmm. So I'll just ex explain what I've done here. Uh, create a 3D CAD file, which you can use AutoCAD, SolidWorks. SolidWorks now is more famous here. They are using SolidWorks. Uh, most of them anyway and then you can also use uh, there, are, uh, there are a couple of <laughs> 3D, 3D CAD files out, out there but so far now I only can think of this two uh, so, uh, AutoCAD and SOLIDWORKS and then <clears throat> this CAM file will be programmed into the to the 3D printer using there's a software they call it Cura Cura, and then they download it into the 3D printer. This 3D printer will basically print it layer by layer from bottom to top, and then mm -hmm. the object will be finished. Yeah. 
So okay. like according to that, yeah. I thought that a 3D printer can already read the STL format, right? Yeah, this one different. They, yeah, yeah, it, it can read the format, but they use this software because you can do it remotely. The person who's co controlling this 3D printer he, is not here, so they okay. use the, this camera to transfer this file to the 3D printer. Ah, uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> this one is the, they called call me to research about the companies involving in the manufacturing for manufacturing for the flow wrapping and string wrapping machine. Flow wrapping as in the, the boxes are stacked and then it wraps around with the plastic. And then string wrap is more of uh, wrap plastic and then use uh, a heat, like a hair dryer heat to, to melt the plastic onto the to the product. So currently, Top Glove does not use string wrap machine yet. Flow wrap, of course, they use they use it to wrap their big boxes and then they ship it overseas. So they want me to find companies that are manufacturing these machines. Maybe in the future they will use the string wrap machine. I I'm not so sure. So this is what I done. I done I search uh, by country, which one they did, and then their their website, <clears throat> and then uh, to week four. Uh, yeah, this is the this is the the guide that I'm talking about. Uh, the pieces of the guide uh, have been sent to or someone for adjustments. So it's not here. This is only one of the parts that that I can. I managed to take a picture. So fixing the guide prototype, they, they actually asked me to fix. I already fixed it in, but there were some issues. So they had to be uh, sent for adjustments. <laughs> and this one, okay, a company came came to do some adjustments on this thermoform machine and I was sent there to, to observe to see what they're doing and to report on their progress, on the changes they made. Yeah. So this why I went to another factory and I and I observed what other companies do. And this one, uh, okay. In this case, the they asked me to research. This is a bit different. The application about the electric linear actuator. This is actually they wanted to because of limited spacing. They wanted to put an electric linear actuator on top of one another so that the first one will extend and the second one will extend <clears throat> because of limited spacing so they had to made it into two this one is still work in progress yeah. <laughs> okay um excuse me <clears throat> this one is uh learn about the sysmax studio this is something like uh the the ladder diagram that the doctor told us. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my for studio. PLC, right? Yeah, PLC for PLC. Yeah. Uh, this Sysmax Studio is yeah. They use the ladder diagram to it's like their software, their digital software to to program their machines. Yeah. So I learn a bit through YouTube so that I can understand what they are talking about. Yeah. So in this Sysmax Studio, uh, is it something like Fleet Sim that you can simulate? Yes, yes, oh. yes. Yeah, it's also do you, have do you have license for this software, or is it free? Uh, I think um, it's free because I just downloaded it in my computer. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, I think it's free. <laughs> All right, interesting. Maybe you can uh, propose. Um, a project using this like a simulation based project i mean for because your the, for the final year project because um i mean for final year uh, you are going to uh next semester uh, you already take uh fip one right yeah. yeah i mean um yeah during this corona uh, pandemic <laughs> we really recommend like a uh, software or simulation based project because you know 
with the hardware we cannot really predict maybe in future that you cannot come to the university because that's what we, we experienced before with the with your senior so if you think if you if this the sysmax studio can actually uh, be a good platform for you to propose a design for anything like for any kind of application but instead of uh, doing it uh, in the real hardware you you design and and perform the simulation in the studio and you can also get the measurement like the analysis of the pressure the force or whatever then it will be uh, fitting the uh, FYP scope Mm, I see. But, yeah, but uh, I, honestly, I never use this one, lah. So I don't know whether is it really like like that, uh, or it's just very simple. I don't know. They say this is the updated version of what we learned from Utem. So <laughs> okay. Yeah, the the one that I know already is they say it's updated, so they are using Sysmax Studio. So I went and learned just to make conversation. All right. All right. Uh, this one is a uh, pick and place machine. Uh, there was another, there was a larger part on the left side of this machine, and they asked me to disassemble this structure so that you can send back to to the to the end user. So I dis so I disassemble this structure. Uh, what you see is the the result. <laughs> the end result. And next is all right. Uh, then they took me to visit the production line. Uh, I managed to see. From the begin uh, at the beginning, I show you the the f the flow of the manufacturing process. So they yeah. took me to to one of the factories, and then they showed me the the production line of the whole process. So I went and see all for the the whole the whole process up to the packaging. Ah, interesting. Uh, <laughs> yes. <very interesting. laughs> and, okay. Uh, this one I believe I did it on a Saturday, a half day work. So there were some connector that some connectors came in. So they asked me to separate it and label them. So this is why I did uh, packaging all the sampling, sampling all the connectors in one box. And uh, in week five, <laughs> okay, week five, uh, I had some free time, so I went online and then I learned SolidWorks. <laughs> mm. I found some time and then I start to learn SolidWorks. Uh, that I can better, I can do my project, and then I can send to the to the buddy system or the to the supervisor the parts that I create. All right, uh, they they asked me to run some errands for them. Go to SMC Subang to pick up some parts, some components for Top Girl. Okay. Okay, again, <laughs> I went and observed and report what the suppliers did to the, this thermal machine. And I sent items to the end user again. <laughs> A lot of repetition stuff. And we're into week six. Right, uh, after one week of learning SOLIDWORKS, uh, I went online and then I searched some some parts with the uh, with front, top, and then side view of a of a component and I designed them to to master the skill. Yeah. So I designed uh, these two models. Yeah. Why is it like do, do you have a, a task with SOLIDWORKS or why did you take initiative because everyone, for them? Because everyone in this department is using SOLIDWORKS to design. Ah uh, okay okay okay. So I just took the time took the took the time to go and learn SOLIDWORKS and then try to master the craft. Okay, good. Alright, I also train three more 3D models. They print a lot for sensor covers and then I send them to the end user. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of them. Um, this one, uh, research on double electric actuator. Basically what I told you just now, uh, extend on the top and then the bottom extends some more. Uh, mm -hmm. they, this this is what they mean by double electric cylinder, but currently I search true and true. None of the companies out there are using this kind of method. Usually when they refer to double electric cylinder, they are moving it simultaneously. So uh, this research is still ongoing. I'm still searching for companies that that work one after another, the electric li linear actuator. Okay. And we're we're in week seven, which is this week. Mm -hmm. 
okay, they asked me to do glove packaging. So this one sent to the supplier for trial and error for their new machine. So I packed like 200 gloves in one box, tracky boxes. Yeah. So I think. Is it manual? Un- manual packaging? Yeah. Yes, manually counting one by one. Counting. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you can propose idea how to uh, count the glove, or is it too thin? Oh no, because these gloves, uh, they are actually just spoiled, broken, or used gloves. Uh, they just want okay. it to, yeah, to fit into the box so that it can do trial runs for the supplier for the new machine. Ah, okay, okay. But in the real so, uh, production, uh, did they count it uh, automatically? Uh, like by using any machine? Half, half and half. Some They use uh, workforce to put the gloves in and then machine will do the rest. We're packaging up into until the box stage and then it, it will still need manual labor. So it's still 50-50 at the moment. Okay. So, All right. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Are you working in a in a, a specific uh, team or like a group <clears throat> or? I mean, you have no, your supervisor, no. and then is there any um one specific team with uh the similar technician or the coworker? Or you just uh, randomly work with uh, everyone randomly. under your department? Randomly. My supervisor has a lot of projects, so mm-hmm. I'll just do a bit from here, I'll do a bit from there, do a bit from there. So it depends on which project and then you will work with different person? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, did you uh, encounter any, any challenge in uh, communicating with you know, for example, like uh, maybe foreign workers or operators. Uh, right? no. no, 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 no foreign workers. <laughs> oh, so you didn't deal with uh, the foreign workers in your department? No, because no, because it's a bit too dangerous. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, what about um, <clears throat> um, ethics or? I mean, in your in your department, or maybe in Top Glove in general, did you observe any uh, specific uh, code of conduct or standard practice that the, the, all the employees have to to uh, adhere or to comply with? Yes, you always Anything have to with... do. You always have to do exercise in the morning. Exercise. <laughs> There's always a, a, a stretching routine in the morning. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. On your own or...? No, the whole floor. <laughs> oh, okay. What about... That is interesting. What about safety guidelines that you have to comply? Oh, yeah. When you enter... When you visit a production line or when you yeah, go to any production line, you have to always wear a helmet. Okay. Safety shoes, yeah. Safety shoes. What about? Are you wearing this? This? It's just like oh. a. It's just no more shirt. Right? It's not like a jacket or any safety no. things. Um, oh, just now I went to one of the production line. I have to wear a white suit. The I went to suit, a clean room. Clean room. Yeah. Clean room. Yeah. yeah. I have to wear wear the that that cover, wear yeah. a coat and everything. And also the electrostatic shoes, right? Yes. <coughs> mm. What about the the working ethic uh, in terms of um, the time? I mean, uh, the working hours. Working hours. The uh, working hours given was eight thirty until six. But okay. I came a bit earlier and I left a bit later. <laughs> oh, so you can, it's flexible like that, right? No, 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 it's not flexible, it's fixed. <laughs> oh, you come, you have to be at 8.30, but you, at least you have to stay until... 6. six. Okay, but you, you can, yeah. you can also stay longer, right? Or... Yeah, you can. Okay. 
uh, have you ever yeah and what is maybe the last question like how um, yeah um, what do you think about working from home uh, as a, even though you are not engineer yet but I believe you are doing like a, you know like an engineering training so what do you think about working from home maybe it's your first experience working from home actually or maybe maybe from experience from your yeah you can hear from the other engineers you know maybe they share something about you know working from home yeah so I, actually about? similar experience of me and other other staff they work from <coughs> home and mm-hmm. not so much things to do because everything here is physical you have to see the product look at it and then you have to make adjustments so working from home okay. less stuff and then you're a bit more boring nothing much to do just research 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 so for this kind of job or production maybe working from home will be will really affect the the production time right yeah less productivity yes. but maybe in the design i mean like i don't know R and D department maybe is nothing's different, right? For R and D or maybe for product. Yeah, the software part, it will be better lah. Oh, but here more more towards mechanical, it will be physical will be better. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's all that I need to ask uh, from you, and yeah. So uh, yeah, thank you, Miss Carmen, for supervising our students. Uh, and thank you for top glove for as well. And for Bona, I wish you all the best for the rest of your training, uh, industry training. And yeah, and I'll see you in UTEM next semester. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Okay, bye. Have a nice day. Bye.